Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a map cabinet. My sister-in-law and brother run a photography studio and they do a lot of really large fine art prints. Currently, those are being stored on a desk and against the wall and in a chair, so we're gonna build them a storage solution. We're gonna make a piece of furniture that goes right here that looks like an old map cabinet that can hold a lot of big horizontal prints. Let's do it. This cabinet was made of materials that you can get at just about any home center, mostly one by fours and plywood. I started by cutting down several pieces of one by four to make the outside frames. Essentially, this thing is two frames held together by some stringers and then a base on the bottom to lock it all together. Of course, there's a million ways to make frames, but I was mimicking an old piece of furniture that my sister-in-law had found, so I wanted no fasteners on the outside, and to accomplish that, I used pocket holes on the back side of it. I also put a rabbiting bit in my router and ran around the inside of the frame to make an inset for a panel. I used a corner chisel, but you could use a regular chisel to square these off as well. I measured the final dimensions of the inset and then cut two panels of really thin plywood to drop in. I glued these panels into place and used some really short brad nails to hold them there while the glue dried. You could also just put something heavy on them to hold them flat, but I needed to move on to the next part. One of the downsides of pocket holes is that they're not great to look at, so if you can't hide them, you have to cover them. And in this case, I used some wooden plugs to slide into the pocket holes but I only had a couple of them, so I used a wooden dowel to fill the other ones. This is probably a cheaper option if you're going to be doing a lot of these, but you do have to saw them off and sand them flush. I also use pocket holes to connect these together with the stringers, and these are going to be hidden, so it's not really a big deal. To start breaking down the sheet of plywood into usable pieces, I use this guide for my circular saw. It makes it a lot easier to make manageable pieces that I can push through the table saw later. And after I cut this piece for the base, I had to cut a rabbit into the bottom of each one of the frames and onto the bottom panel. I did this by raising the blade 3 eighths of an inch and putting it 3 eighths of an inch away from the fence. This way I could run the frames over in two orientations and knock out a rabbit. You could also do this with a router and it would work just as well. I cut these same mating pieces on the bottom panel so that each one of the side frames would fit right on top of the panel. But before gluing those things together, I did sand down the rest of those plugs, just so I wouldn't have to figure out how to do it later. I used some glue and some longer brad nails to hold the side frames onto the bottom panel. This is all going to be reinforced with the stringers later, this is really just the first step. To add the stringers, I put on some glue where they were going to touch and drove in the pocket hole screws, trying to make sure that these pieces were flush to the top and the outside. This is a big piece, so it was helpful to have Josh holding the other end to keep it in line. Next up, it was time to make the drawers. These are really wide drawers, and so rather than using a thin material on the bottom like normal, I used half-inch plywood to make sure that it was supported well. I cut down the pieces for the bottom of the drawers and then made a frame around the outside out of 1x4. Now this is super basic. The pieces are just butt-jointed together with glue and brad nails to hold it all in place. If you buy drawer slides, they come with instructions that explain how to put them on, so it's very easy to follow. But I put the rail on the side of the drawer before putting the receiving part on the inside of the cabinet. To make sure that these were all lined up, I cut some spacers to set the drawer on. You'll see that in just a second. Before I put it in though, I added the drawer front. I glued on a piece of 1x4 that was a little bit taller than the drawer itself, and drove in some screws from the back side. And just a note, every time I have ever put on drawer slides, they've needed adjustment. That's just the way it goes. And while I got those in the right place, Josh cut down all the shelves to put in later on. The next step was to cut down the top piece, and this is just a basic piece of plywood with a 3 quarter inch overlap around three sides. After I got the piece centered and made sure that the overhang was the same all the way around, I drove in the pocket screws from the back side to hold it in place, and then countersunk some holes on the front stretcher so that I could drive in some screws to pull down the front edge.
So that this piece didn't sit directly on the ground, we wanted to add a base to it, kind of like a toe kick. My initial thought was to make it really bulky and strong, but in the end, it really just needed to be a 1x4 frame. So I put this together just like the drawers, 1x4s glued and nailed at the corners. And again, I drilled pocket holes all around the inside of this so I could drive screws up from the bottom. And that way you don't see any of the fasteners. After I got this frame put together, I did see that there were some pretty big warps in one of the pieces. It didn't sit flat on the frame, but once I started driving in the screws, it locked it down, and the whole piece sat perfectly flat on the floor. To cover up the fact that I used plywood on the top, I used some edge banding. This is the same thing I've done on a lot of projects recently because it's a really easy way to cover up the fact that you're using plywood. It's a simple iron-on banding that's a little bit oversized to the material so you can come back and sand down the edge or trim it with a knife if you need to. And after some sanding, the construction was pretty much done, so I moved on to painting. I decided to paint the carcass before putting in the shelves just because everything would be easier to get to. But eventually, I had to add a bunch of pocket hole screws to all of the shelves. When we were making this, we put four holes in the end of each shelf, but in reality, you only need two on the outside. The inset panel on the side frames makes it so that you can't screw in all four screws. And for the hardware for this piece, I found the handles and some little label holders that I liked, but they were different finishes. So Josh got to experiment with mixing paints to try to match the two finishes. Basically, we were trying to turn the nickel into more of a brass finish. And he got a really good result here using gold and green paint mixed together. We used a simple jig to drill the holes for the hardware. It's not essential, but it's very handy if you're gonna be doing a lot of the same hardware. And if you are interested in a jig like that or any of the other tools or materials that I use, I've always got affiliate links for those things down in the description of every single video. After that, the drawers were all done and working really well, so next up, it was time for the shelves. There were quite a few of these shelves, and they were all evenly spaced. So I made a little spacer out of a piece of 1x4 and laid it in place, used it as a rest to put the shelf up against before I drove in the screws. I did the top and the bottom of each one of these, moved the spacer down to the next shelf, and kept moving. I cut down one more piece of really thin plywood to use as a back for this whole thing. It serves no purpose other than to block the view of the wall behind it. This thing's almost finished, but I had a couple of notes I wanted to give you. I got these little label holders to put right in the middle of the drawers, but these are just too small for the scale of the whole thing. So instead of putting them on, I'm gonna wait and get a little bit larger ones. The drawers on this were a request from the person I made it for. She wanted two on the bottom and then the rest open shelving. But in the digital plans that I have for this on my site, you can do any combination of drawers and shelves. You can mix and match whatever you want. The last thing here is to put on the back and then we're gonna go deliver it. I'm very happy with how this thing turned out, and I'm really glad to have been able to make a piece for a specific location, although I think it would work in a lot of different places. If you want to make one of these for yourself, I'm going to have links to the plans down below. Go check those out. And in those plans, there are options for shelves or drawers you can mix and match. For this one, I did use an eggshell paint, and there's no clear coat on top of it, and that's because we want it to eventually look kind of distressed. After the natural wear sets in and they're happy with the look, they're going to put some polyurethane on it to kind of lock it in. I hope you liked this video and I'd love to know what you think about it. Let me know down in the comments. I've got lots of other videos that you may want to check out. Those will be over here and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This thing's almost finished, but I wanted to... It looks great in this...